Welcome to the Coin Pros Crypto Talk Hour, hosted by Randall Parker Jr. and airing every Wednesday evening from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bringing you up-to-date news, prices, coin information, interviews, contests, giveaways, and much more. Tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Help us take money back from the state. Today is Wednesday, July 30th, 2014, and you are tuning into another episode of Coin Pros Crypto Talk Hour, sponsored by the Voluntary Virtues Network, Coin Pros. Today's big guest is Big D Shaggy J. Coming on the program to talk pink coin and poker. First, we have some news. We're going to talk about uh, the price of Bitcoin, which is back under $600. There's a reason to worry about that. CoinSafe makes a big splash in the Bitcoin community. They're going to be able to turn every business into a Bitcoin ATM. We'll talk about that. American Eagle is uh, rumored, uh, and I have a little lead as to why I believe they will be accepting Bitcoin in the short term. Um, and also, Newsbreak blockchain app back in the Apple iStore. So go to the uh, Apple App Store or whatever the crap they call it these days and get yourself the blockchain app. Stay tuned. Don't miss the interview at the end of the episode. If you have to skip past the news, go right ahead. It's a great interview with Big D Shaggy J of Pink Coin. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So I want to touch on the pricing of Bitcoin today um, a little bit. Uh, as of right now, I'm recording this segment at uh, basically like midnight uh, Tuesday morning. So we shouldn't be too far off. We had a pretty high volume spike of selling take place. Uh, just around the morning of, of the 24th of July, uh, where Bitcoin went from around 620 to 625 and fell down to about 590s. Um, everybody knows there's a resistance point on the charts at most of the $100 intervals, so it makes sense that if the trading was pushing lower, that the sell walls or, or sorry, the buy walls would cave in and, and trigger a little bit of a drop down to uh, 600. That's kind of some trader speak. Hopefully, you guys can keep up with that a little bit, but basically. It just means that the orders for people who want to buy Bitcoin were kind of thin in the area where that price fell down and there was no buy support to bring that price back up. So a little free market uh, Bitcoin interaction for you there to understand. But basically, um, as you can tell by the charts, hitting the 27th to yesterday, the 28th, which is Sunday, uh, I'm sorry, Monday. And then now uh, we, we've been as low as seven, 570 uh, $570.50 per Bitcoin, which right around maybe 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time on the 28th to now we're seeing a little uptick. We're seeing some, some higher volume in buying uh, orders, and uh, we've seen um, pressure up towards 600 We're back at 590 So I'm going to jump into some analysis of that, but you can take a look at the chart, and um, we'll uh, we'll talk about it. But... What does this mean for Bitcoin? Is it really a problem? Is it something to, to really fuss over? I'm not so sure, and uh, here's why. So I told you guys I'd give you um, my justification as to why the little drop in Bitcoin pricing isn't uh, anything to sweat on right now. First of all, you're talking about from 625 to 570 in a stretch, and you're talking about it's already rebounded after that low point 12 hours later to 590. So from 630, 625 to 590, we're talking about a change of uh, 35 points, which is about 5% of Bitcoin's price. Not a big drop even for, um, I mean, it's it's a reasonable drop, but it's not a major drop even for a big company such as, um, you know, Apple or Google or anything like that. So that's the first thing I want to say. The other thing is you have to look at a lot of the fundamentals with regards to Bitcoin. If you're not looking at the difficulty rating, if you're not looking at 
what's happening with the mining um, produce, the, the hardware pr manufacturers of mining. If you're not looking at the hash rate, I know these are some advanced terms for some people, but these are all things that factor into pricing because the only way for a Bitcoin to be made is through mining, through the process of mining. So when you mine a coin, um, keeping it really simple, you you have a computer that mines a coin, you're gonna get a reward. And if you paid for mining equipment, if you paid for hardware, you're looking to recoup some of that cost usually. You're looking to try to get uh, some of that reward on the market and turn it to, to cash so you can pay your, your utility bills or pay your mortgage or pay whatever the case may be. So that's something that I think people need to take a little bit into account because you're talking about um, the price of an asset and the price of an asset largely has to do with what someone's willing to pay for it. So. Um, when you have an abundance of sellers, supply and demand is, is, a, is a market force that we should all be aware of as, as libertarians or as anarchists or volunteers, whatever you want to call it, to where when there's more providers of a good or service and there's the same amount of users of that good or service, the price will drop because supply has gone up and demand has stayed the same. Um, so my argument is not in any way, shape or form that demand, uh, supply is outpacing demand um, because the supply of Bitcoin is constant. So, yes, the demand is the is sort of the contributing factor, but based on the, again the technological aspects of Bitcoin, the um, uh, the block rewards, the hashing power of the network, all these factors will contribute into how many coins are being sold and how many coins are being held. When price is going up, when hardware is scarce, when difficulty is going to go um, down for some reason maybe there's the scarcity of hardware, um, then price will, will go up because miners and, and, and the generators of coins will be holding their coins as opposed to trying to sell them onto the market as fast as possible. So these little price fluctuations that we see uh, are nothing compared to what we've been through. And as a, as a longer term Bitcoin enthusiast and user, um, it's a little boring actually to see a major price drop be about 40 points or 50 points when it was used to be 100 or 200 in a day. Um, Bitcoin is very resilient. It's been through way worse and it's stabilizing really well. So I think we're going to see um, a lot more price stability and a, uh, a more steady upward trend because, again, Bitcoin is a true free market uh, in the sense that supply and demand are the only factors that affect price. There is no long arm of the state. Um, and, there, and even if the state is trying to inject its will into Bitcoin, they're gonna find out that that's, that's a losing proposition because when you spend money and it doesn't get what you want done, you have to either choose to cut your losses or just continue to you know, be stupid and waste your money. Um, the state will probably opt for the latter because they really like being aggressive and they really like trying to control things that otherwise shouldn't be controlled, like what people consume in their bodies or what they plant in their ground in front of their house. But how we exchange with one another and how we quantify value in things like whether we want to measure value in dollars or euros or seashells or bitcoin it doesn't matter the state really deserves no place in that and i know that the voluntary virtues network and the and the viewers of my programs uh both the coin pearls crypto talk hour and roads liberty on fridays 8 p.m eastern time both would understand that supply and demand is not a good idea it's just a law of nature just like gravity um scarcity and abundance are real things and if you have less of something, you're gonna value it more if it's important to you. If you have more of it, you'll be more free with that. It's extremely intuitive, even children can get it, even animals can get it. Um, you give your dog or cat less food, they will make that food last. They'll, they'll kind of hoard it. If you feed them and fill their bowl up every day, they'll just get fat, they'll eat as much as they can because they know it's never gonna run out. So if a, if a cat or a kid can figure it out, um, it's pretty funny that the state hasn't, but that's, again, no surprise to us. We see the state uh, gnashing their teeth against uh, reality all the time. So this is just another instance of that. But I wanted to make sure it took a lot of time to go over the pricing because even over 40 or 50 points, I don't want people to go, oh, Bitcoin's dying again or whatever because it's just, it, don't do that. If you study, study Bitcoin, study the fundamentals and cryptocurrencies and get on uh, coinpros.com. Um, and get on Reddit and get on any other site you can find information about cryptocurrency and form your own opinions, <laughs> first of all, because if I were to tell you that one Bitcoin is gonna be worth $60,000 in 2015, 
and I was right, you all can thank me when you're rich. But if I'm wrong, you can all blame me because you put your money into Bitcoin and you lost or you didn't make anything and you could have done something else. So don't go off of what I say. Go off of what you think. But don't go off what other people are telling you. Form your own opinions. And uh, I think you'll probably come to the same conclusion that I have that Bitcoin is on an upward track long term. And uh, if anybody out there knows because you're a trader or because you're uh, a market mover, if you're a pump and dump guy, if you're a scam coin operator, I really don't care. I'll have you on the program because whatever you do, you're part of the uh, ecosystem and you could lend some sort of insight to our to our audience. So um, if you have any insight on Bitcoin pricing or markets, then uh, send me a message. Um, you can private message me or just comment in the uh, video description and I will reach out to you and we'll get you on the program to discuss your, um, your understanding. All right, cool. So the next thing I wanna feature on the show today is a company called CoinSafe. You can check them out at coinsafe.com. They have a really cool idea or uh, product, and what they're going to be doing is basically making it so that every business that is a Bitcoin supporter or anything like that can can become a Bitcoin ATM. Basically, like it's obvious, but nobody thought of it, I guess. So here's how it kind of works. Basically, you accept Bitcoin in your business. Let's say you're a shoe store, and you have a couple of Bitcoin in your stash and you got cash in your drawer and everything like that. So if someone comes in and they wanna buy Bitcoin, you use the CoinSafe app to do a Bitcoin transaction with that person where they give you cash and you give them Bitcoin. And it's done through CoinSafe and it's it's the same as essentially just doing the transaction with people in real life. But what makes it different is that CoinSafe is gonna list your business as basically an ATM location for Bitcoin. So if you're in San Antonio, Texas, or you know, St. Louis, Missouri, or something where maybe there's not a ton of Bitcoin action or a ton of Bitcoin ATMs, you could essentially uh, make it make your own ATM without any equipment. You just become the ATM. So maybe you, if you wanted to start this out, and you didn't have any Bitcoin, you could go to CoinSafe.com, list your business as a Bitcoin ATM merchant, and um, you can actually maybe just buy a Bitcoin or two to start out and say, "Hey, I have Bitcoin for sale." So people can come into your business, buy Bitcoin from you, and you can create your own markup. So if you want to mark it up 2% or 3% or whatever as like an ATM fee, that's upon you to choose. You can do it for free if you want to, just to support Bitcoin. Um, as of right now, CoinSafe is not actually, um, they're not actually um, charging any fee internally for themselves. So now's a chance for you to get involved and drive a lot more foot traffic into your business by bringing CoinSafe on board and accepting Bitcoin and becoming a Bitcoin ATM. Future Media Management will be doing that eventually. Right now we're uh, based out of a pretty rural area. So, and we don't have a um, brick and mortar location either. So I really wouldn't want someone coming to my actual home to try to buy Bitcoins from me, like a total stranger. So I'll hold off on actually putting my business in the directory at this point in time. But once I have an actual office, which we're trying to set up for some time in the end of this year or into 2015, uh, which probably be based um, on one of the coasts, either east or west, you know, whether it's in the New York or New Jersey area or whether it's in LA. Um, this kind of is an awesome thing. So coinsafe.com, you don't have to buy a Bitcoin ATM. You can just become an ATM and use their software and use their service and start accepting Bitcoin um, for cash or start accepting cash for Bitcoin, whichever way you like it, at your business. Um, so pretty cool. Check them out, coinsafe.com. All right, guys, so this is a pretty cool one. Um, it looks like an American Eagle outlet in Kittery, Maine. So a nice local story for us, for my Maine viewers. My Maine viewers. <laughs> um, the American Eagle outlet in Kittery, Maine now accepts Bitcoin. And uh, you can see the uh, back of their cash reg register here. Um, but uh, pretty cool. Now accepting Bitcoin right on a sticker with the American Eagle logo. Um, my guess is this is something higher up the chain because it's got... Download our free app at ae.com forward slash app. It's got a QR code. And uh, I'm going to guess we're going to hear probably in a day or two that American Eagle has stepped up and is now accepting Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to do a quick search to see uh, American Eagle. I'll probably edit out this shit in the actual show. Okay, so it looks like um, as of January 28, 2012, American Eagles American Eagle operated a little under 1,100 stores in the United States and Canada, um, and 77 kids brand stores. 
There's 21 franchise stores in 10 countries. I don't know if the one accepting Bitcoin might be one of the franchise stores or not, because that could mean something diff- different in terms of maybe whether or not um, it's a company-wide decision. But uh, it is on the when you look at the picture, it is on a, an American Eagle branded sticker. So that looks like it came from corporate. As a, as a marketing person, I would guess that we have a, another announcement down the pipe coming out. So stay tuned for that. Everybody, we are here today. We got Big D, Shaggy J, with the Pink Coin crew here on Coin Pro's Crypto Talk Hour. Uh, we're very excited. We're going to get into all the nitty gritty with Pink Coin, what's going on, what sets them apart, everything else. But just uh, really glad to have you here, Shaggy J. Big D, Shaggy J. What's going on, buddy? It's a pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, just just working hard on behalf of Pink Coin, man. Just just trying to get people interested, involved, and uh, trying to answer all my my Twitter notifications that I've been having the last couple hours. I, uh, I asked my followers to give me some contest ideas of how we could raise some some money for our National Breast Cancer Foundation campaign, and I got flooded with responses, man. <laughs> I went for a walk and had like 150 notifications I had to get back to. That's a good problem to have, bro. That's awesome. Good for you. What is your Twitter handle so people can go out and uh, jump in? Uh, it's, it's, on, it's on it's on my uh, it's on my undertitle. Crypto Casey is my uh, my Twitter handle for for crypto. And for Pinkcoin, I'm also Big D Shaggy J, but uh, I tend tend to separate the two because I don't want to flood all my all my real my uh, my real life people with uh, with tons of crypto stuff because I I want to give the crypto the attention it deserves, and I don't want to also piss my friends off, so I gotta separate the two a little bit, you know. <laughs> Dude, I know what you're talking about. My friends get sick of hearing about crypto sometimes. They're like, "Dude, is that the yeah, only thing man. you think about? Can you shut up?" <laughs> yeah, and I need I need to get you people these these uh this this word out, these good messages, you know. So. I got to do it justice and give it its own uh, its own account. Crypto Casey, the Pink Prophet. The Pink Prophet. So yeah, Crypto Casey, the Pink, Pro- Pink Prophet. What? Um, before we get into Pink Coin, what was your? Um, how did you? What was your aha moment for Bitcoin? What like? What brought you into the crypto fold? Tell tell okay. tell the viewers a little bit about that. So I w- I've been a professional poker player for like seven years, and I'm not sure if your viewers are aware. I I know we talked a little about bit about this before. And you have an idea somewhat, but in 2011, the FBI seized and uh, raided the servers of the three largest U.S.-facing online poker sites: Bolto Poker, Poker Stars, Ultimate Bet. And when that happened, all my stream of income, my job, essentially seized up overnight. All the assets I had were seized um, by the FBI, and I no longer had access to them. Um, myself, much like my friends, kept about 95% of our personal net worth online and all of a sudden we're broke um, and so um, having this uh, entity come and take my my job from me, my income um, and the the money that I did have without any warning at all, without any control, without any say kind of left me sour and so with that there was no longer the ability to play online poker for the United States and I didn't want to move so then I saw there was this Bitcoin U.S. facing site called Seals with Clubs, and I was like, "Yo, what's Bitcoin?" And so I started looking into it. Um, at the time, I wanted to get into it, but it was so difficult to get to get any because you had to go to an ex- like sign up for an exchange and wire money to some unknown entity in some other country that you didn't know about. And I wasn't going to deposit a lot of money. I was going to deposit like two or three hundred dollars. Um, but it, the wire fees were ridiculous. You had to wire money. It was like thirty dollars to get three hundred or two hundred dollars worth. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do this. And so I kind of watched it steadily since I guess this was like October 2011. And I watched it steadily grow, steadily grow, steadily grow. And I just kept st- waiting on the sidelines. It kept doubling. And I'm like, yeah, I was going to have this much in Bitcoin before. Now I have this much. Like I don't, I don't even want to get involved. Like I'm kind of sour. And then I just kept seeing yeah. it take off and take off. And was like, damn, I better get in this game. Right. And so I, I finally pulled the trigger in like November of 2011. I bought into to Litecoin um, because there was a U.S. facing site, Lighttree.com, where you could buy um, with just making a Bank of America transfer. And I have a Bank of America account. And so I did that. I bought some, and I was fortunate enough to get into Litecoin at like three dollars and eighty cents. And within two weeks, it had gone up to forty-eight bucks. And I sold it. And I had a little bit of a roll to. To mess around with altcoins now, and so since then I've been just in the altcoin game, um, just dabbling around and 
with that, I decided to invest a little bit in Pinkcoin. And when uh, the original dev just dropped the project, and myself and a few other guys who had an investment and who liked the project just kind of took it over, uh, made it our own. It's an awesome story, dude. Honestly, like, it, it has a lot of similar parts to stories that I hear from other people and kind of like the common elements of just kind of something triggers you to find Bitcoin and then some service or site gets you to get really deep into it. Um, but it's funny. I played Seals with Clubs, too. I, I didn't we didn't get a chance to talk about <laughs> that. But, um, is, are they still around, sealswithclubs.eu? They sure. are, actually. I actually just played the World Series of Poker main event, um, like, I guess not just, like, Two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, um, and I was at at the table with uh, with Phil Ivy and also the owner of the Seals of Club site, the founder Brian Mikon, um, and we were talking about Bitcoin and Seals of Clubs and all that all that good stuff, uh, crypto at the table, which is kind of a fun experience. And surprisingly enough, actually, uh, Mikon um, put out a tweet like about four months ago and had this real old school World Series of Poker um, jacket, which I have some in my closet. And asked if any of his followers uh, wanted it, and I was like, and asked what we could do for it, and I was like, yo, I will wear that thing for the World Series of Poker main event, like hook it up. And he's like, all right, sold. And he sent it to me, and so I met him um, the day that morning, like in the in the parking lot, and I showed him the jacket. And I was like, yeah, I got this jacket still, and I, I wore it um, on day one for a little bit. I had it in the back of my chair because the thing's like real small and smelled like an ashtray, and it was awful. <laughs> but uh. Right. But I took a picture with him, and then he actually got seated at my table then at like an hour into the day, and we were, it was kind of a weird coincidence. But yeah, uh, to to make the, to summarize that story, <laughs> Seals of Clubs is still around, <laughs> kicking. <laughs> um, yeah. With regards to like the whole catalyst thing of realizing like Bitcoin is something I'm interested in, and and that whole feeling of like ah shit, I'm missing the bus. Like, and I I know that feeling. Like, it's funny. I um I found out about Bitcoin in 2000 and like uh. 11, 2012, but I guess I was watching it, and like you said, I mean, maybe it was 11, I guess, because I was watching it from when it was under a dollar. It was like 10 cents, 50 cents, mm. and I was listening, I was a big listener to um, Free Talk Live, which is on LRN, Liberty Radio Network. You okay. go to lrn.com and check them out, but the Free Talk Live people, since they're liberty-based and they're, they're part of this volunteers community, they were always looking for things that were alternatives to the, the um, federally mandated money supply, which mm -hmm. some people may not know, but um, we're actually mandated to use the dollar, not by law, but by exclusion, meaning there are no other currencies accepted. There's no law that says you can only use dollars for exchanging that good, goods and services, but it does say that you can only use dollars to pay your taxes. And considering that's 30% of what all of us pay for, that's a good reason to be in the dollar, so to yeah. speak. So they kind of get you that way. but. Um, for you, it was poker, in a sense, and how your assets were basically robbed from you, right? I mean, did you ever get those back? I wanted to know, too. Did you ever get that, any of that money back? Um, yeah, actually, PokerStars reached an agreement with uh, the U.S. government within two weeks and paid back their U.S. players but shut them out from playing. And then Full Tilt Poker was deemed a Ponzi scheme, and for three years they uh, held us hostage, essentially. Um, and they, they, they pretty much required a company to come buy the toxic assets and repay the players back before we can get our funds back and poker stars stepped in and bought full sale poker and um, and slowly started repaying players through this garden city group um, and I think in March of this year they started paying players back and they've slowly been paying players back all year all year I think they're on phase two of four four waves or something. So hmm. Full Tilt Poker hasn't paid everyone back, but they paid a bunch of players back. Stars has paid everyone. And Ultimate Bet just shit the bed and is gone. They're done. Um, no one's getting that money back as far as as far as far we know. It's pretty much just done. Well, so, I hope you were uh, mostly in uh, Poker Stars, my man. I, I was. I was mostly in... Actually, that's not true. I had Full Tilt? I was pretty pretty diversified. I had some in Full Tilt, I had some on Stars, but I had most of it actually in UV, if I'm being honest. I like UV. Awful. That sucks, man. I liked UV. I liked Poker Stars. I liked Full Tilt. I hated Full Tilt with a passion, um, but I started there. I liked. Um, I think Poker Stars are probably the the. If I had to say over the whole period of time, that was the one I had the least problems with. And I enjoyed the most. I did like UV, and I also played a little Bow Dog. Well, um, don't get me wrong. I like Stars and Tilt the most, and I had most of my volume there. I just I had a couple of different streams of income through poker, through playing and coaching and backing. Mm -hmm. So I'd sponsor players and uh, get fifty percent of their profit. And uh, one of a couple of my horses, people that I backed, had a scores on Ultimate Bet, and I had to cash out for them and accept star, trade them stars for Ultimate Bet. 
like the week before Black Friday and just got stuck with a bunch of money on there, which is unfortunate for me. <laughs> well, you're here today to tell a tale, and you're and you're getting involved in bigger and better things. In a sense, I mean, poker is yep. a great game. It'll it's timeless. It'll always be around, I'm sure. But cryptocurrency is more than timeless. It's revolutionary. Oh, yeah. It's for it's sure. something that I would say that. Hmm. Probably like 98% of the world has no idea about. Not even like, oh yeah, I've heard of Bitcoin and I kind of loosely understand it. Like, literally, if I talk to 100 people randomly in this world, 98 out of 100 of them will probably tell me, oh, I don't know anything about that. What the fuck is that? I've never heard yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, they, so, they might they might have heard of it, but they have no idea what it is. Like, yeah. yeah uh, and I would say you're ones that have heard of it. Yeah, even the ones that have heard of it, I mean, what good does that do when you've heard of something? I mean, it's, I've heard that name, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> is it a band? Is it a type of food? Yeah. Like, is it Bitcoin? Exactly. People don't know. So, <laughs> so but it, let's, it, let's, and everyone should know because it's it's literally the future. It gives people complete autonomy and control over their assets and the ability to transfer mm -hmm. it and store value, which is what mm -hmm. I, I see as the, the biggest the biggest uh, intrigue for myself is the autonomy and control of your own assets. I'm, I'm tired of being told what I can and cannot do with my, with my funds, you know, with my assets. <laughs> yeah, and that's awesome. I love that you're down and you and you kind of get. I think it's it's really kind of interesting to me how many people are interested in cryptocurrency that are just interested in it from a nerd kind of geek standpoint. Like, yeah, I'm a programmer, or yeah, I'm into security, or yeah, I'm a hacker, or whatever, or even a graphic designer or something. Like people just the nerdier types. Are into it, but they're not seeing that this is a political, this is a fiscal, this is a everything revolution in the world. Social. Everything. We're it, getting, it's empowering the people. Yeah, I say we, like I mean, like I'm doing anything, but like this <laughs> revolution that is, you know, Satoshi, whoever did that, whoever's whoever wrote that first white paper, and it wasn't. I mean, really, if you study it, I know anybody have, but it goes back beyond Satoshi. There is the hash cash algorithm algorithm since the 90s. Um, I think it was IBM and um, some other bank at some point in the 90s tried to issue a digital crypto cash card or something, and like it was mm -hmm. not related to the dollar. But there was a there was a, there was another gold like e gold thing that was that tried to happen like the early 2000s. But the thing is, because it was always centralized, people were able to the federal governments or whoever the authorities were able to go in and seize or shut down something that was infringing upon their monopoly on, on the fiscal uh, order of the world. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just think it's really fascinating to highlight not just people's path to liberty, which I do on my World to Liberty show on Friday at 8 p.m., but also people's path to crypto, path to mm -hmm. Bitcoin, because it, it's useful to understand that if you feel like you're late right now, if you feel like you're missing, the, you missed the boat or you missed the boom and bust cycle, Wrong. Like Bitcoin yeah, can still go to eighty thousand a coin or a hundred, two hundred fifty thousand a coin in four years from now or two years from now, or it could just double. But it doesn't matter. It's still going to change the world and how we see the world, regardless. And the cryptocurrencies as a whole are much larger than just Bitcoin. Like, yeah, Bitcoin has, I mean, a, a, a much lower ceiling as far as like return on investment goes. If you're getting in, in the game now. Um, in the next year than an altcoin will. Like, there are altcoins that are out there that have a h much higher ceiling that can go 10, 20, 50 X their value. And so if you if you think you missed the boat with Bitcoin and, and are only have a short period of time where you, you have your money tied up or whatever it may be, you didn't miss the boat because there's, there's that, another altcoin out there that is going to, to have that value. There's, some, there's somebody adding value to a coin that's going to... Get get somebody or some group or some entity interested that it's gonna have a need and a, and a want and desire for it and it's gonna get in the game and cause that that big price increase that people think that they missed or fear that they missed with Bitcoin and you didn't miss right. it at all because the opportunities are there. That is a huge misconception that people have that oh I missed a boat or or it's too late or whatever like Bitcoin is not a stock first of all you're not you're not getting into Bitcoin to try to make a book I mean yeah you could make yeah. a book and if you if you're listening to Crypto Casey over here a little bit more, and you uh, <laughs> invest in some altcoins, you're more likely to make a nice, a nice buck. I mean, just I mean, in the past year alone, I'm not going to name dollar amounts, but I'll say I made a ten times return on my investment on Black Coin. I made a, a three times return on my investment on Red Coin, R E D D. Um, I made mm -hmm. uh, probably like five times my money on um, Dark Coin. You know, I mean. Nice. And I'm not saying I made thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars or anything like that, but, no, but I mean that kind of ROI is pretty. And awesome. you turn it to 800, 
you take 50 yeah. and you turn into 200, whatever, you're helping yourself out, man. It doesn't hurt. That, kind of, hurt that kind of ROI is almost impossible to find these days in the traditional stock market because by the time these companies reach IPO, they've already done 80% of their growth. They'll, you're going to buy into the last 20% that they have. And right. that, like it's almost impossible to see a kind of ROI to, in today's world over this short period of time than anything but cryptos or just straight gambling. And actually, right. it's funny that you bring up missing the boat because I actually, uh, when I played the World Series of Poker main event a couple weeks ago, I was seated at the table with uh, with Phil Ivey. Um, do you know who that is? Oh, yeah. Phil Ivey is one of the big, big guys in uh, poker, man, right up there with uh, Chan and Helmuth and, and Brunson and all yeah. those guys. Yeah, so Phil Ivey, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, is the greatest poker player on the planet. He's got the biggest gamble in him and and is just, like, he's a boss. He's a legit boss. Um, this guy throws, like, quarter-million-dollar craps rolls and shit. And so um, <laughs> and so I was talking to him at the table, um, and because every poker player wears headphones, right? Like, everyone's at the table wearing headphones, and Phil's wearing Beats by Dre. And I'm like, yo, Phil, how have you not had a, a headphone deal? Like, what's going on here? And he gives me this look like, and I'm like, oh shit, man! Like you had a deal with Beats that you turned down, and he's like, it's like, yeah, man, I was in London, like whatever. Uh, I, they wanted me to come back to the lab and put my prints on it, and I couldn't do it. And he, without me even asking, he's like, that deal was worth twenty million dollars today. And I was like, wow, is that your biggest regret ever? And he's like, like, nah, man, I could have got without me even prompting it. Right? I'm even saying crypto, so I could have gotten into Bitcoin at twenty dollars and a lot of it. And I was like, wow. And I was, I was like, do you own any Bitcoin now? And he's like, nah, man. I was like, don't worry, man. You didn't miss the boat. <laughs> you could still get in all coins. And he's like, really? Word? And I was wearing a pink coin shirt. And I was like, yo, pink coin. And like black coin, bear coin. I was like, all these all these coins are out there. Yeah, he had no yeah. idea. He had no idea of any of these coins at all. Like, it was just completely mm -hmm. clueless. And once I, once I sh like told him what was up, he's like, oh, man, let me get your number. Like, let's, 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 let, let me get, let me get some info, you know? And everyone, I, I think everyone's in, in that same boat. Like, everyone doesn't really know. They've heard of something. They, they thought they missed the boat. And they're like, man, sucks. Game's over. Like, no, the game's not over, man. This is the tip of the iceberg. This is just like the beginning. I can't tell you. It's so funny. When I first got into crypto, um, like as a oh, okay. So let me go back a little bit. Some of my viewers know this, but when I first, like I said, I was watching Bitcoin at like fifty cents, a dollar, two dollars. I remember, I was listening to Free Talk Live one episode, and there was a podcaster um, who was on the show as a guest, and she has her own show. Her name's Stephanie Murphy, and she has a show called Pork Therapy. Well, I don't think she does that show anymore, but she had a few viewers or listeners who were Bitcoin people, like, early on, and that was when Bitcoin was really, like, a tipping phenomenon, mostly, because no one really <laughs> wanted to receive it for, for payment for anything. Yeah. Um, and she, I think in, like, a week or two, when she said, oh, I'll accept Bitcoin for tips, she got, like, 30 or 40 Bitcoin, like, just, like, from, like, oh, here's five, here's two, here's three, like, here's 20. You know, she had like thirty or forty Bitcoin, and then like you know, it dwindled off as Bitcoin was going up. But I know now that I don't know how much she has. Like I'm not in close contact with her, but just suffice to say, like some people were just sitting around, like, oh yeah, like the pizza guy, like ten thousand Bitcoin, okay. But um, yeah, it is is not too late, and it's so cool how like you could be just talking to someone about Bitcoin and then mention Pink Coin or mention another altcoin, and they're like, what the hell is that? Like the same yeah. thing as Bitcoin, but just like you have Coke and Pepsi, you have different varieties of this, like, you don't have different dollars to choose from. The government gives you dollar one, and that's it. Yeah. If you don't like it, tough nuggies. The free market has oh. said, you can have any kind of currency you want. Here's all your choices. Mm -hmm. So without without going too far into uh, any uh, side talk, what, what makes Pinkcoin special? I already know, but tell my audience, what what is your plea? Why do they want to get Pinkcoin? Why don't they want to get black coin or dark coin or something else? Well, I mean, I would encourage everyone to have a diversified portfolio, but... In my personal opinion, what sets Pinkcoin apart um, from everything else, um, well, I guess from a technical standpoint, um, there is a much larger coin supply than, say, Bitcoin. There's 364 million coins in circulation. Um, it's one of these coins that's a proof-of-work, proof-of-stake hybrid. So it started out with a small mining period um, proof-of-work phase on an X11 algorithm, whereas Bitcoin is SHA-256, and there's other algorithms out there, um, like Script, Script N, X13, um, whatever they may be, there's a ton of them now. Um, sure. And so it's an X11 algorithm, which kind of is what Darkcoin was. Um, and there, there's a large community behind it of, of very generous, like-minded, altruistic, um, caring and, and sharing uh, people. And we've um, 
myself and a few other guys, some guys, Sony, Transium, Failed, Crypto Owl, Voxa, and um, Mad Max, kind of money crypto, um, have come together with a and kind of shared this altruistic vision and added value to this to this coin. Um, and what we've done is we've set it apart by offering um, a way to give back. We're, we're we've teamed with the national or with yeah the National Breast Cancer Foundation through stayclassy.org to offer um, a twenty thousand dollar charity charity campaign to raise um, awareness and education for breast cancer research. And we are doing a lot of our uh, efforts to to add value to that to that fundraising campaign, as well as we're doing a lot of things to add value to the coin itself, uh, to the holders and to the community, such as our lottery tip bot, um, which you can send value on Twitter, send tips to people, send lottery tickets, which are instant or not instant when there's a drawing twice a week with over a million pink coin as a as a prize pool, as a jackpot, and you can tweet at this lottery bot, ticket people, and they can get a picture, tweet in response that has their number visually, and every time, or when the lottery draws, you get auto-credited and notified with their account. There's also instant win poker hands that, you can, that are kind of like scratch-offs where you can send people and they win pink coin immediately based on the strength of their hand. Um, so we're doing a lot of cool things to add value and, and to get people involved in sharing and spending, and so we've encouraged our people and led by example to kind of follow suit and tip people on the lottery bot, send tickets, um, send, send poker hands, and get people involved. Um, we've also, we run a lot of prizes and giveaways and, and do a lot of cool things to give back to our community. Something else we have that a lot of coins don't have and are working toward is we have a functioning anonymous feature. We have um, a website-based platform where you can send, use anon.pink and send coins anonymously to people um, without using it. Uh, in the wallet, so you can send from exchange to exchange anonymously. We also released today, uh, actually last night, an anonymous integrated wallet where you can one-click send. There's two features. You can send, send anonymously, um, and with just a click of a button, which most most coins don't have, period, and the ones that do, it's a lot of text-based stuff. You have to type in a bunch of commands. So we're kind of doing a lot of things that um, a lot of people talk about, and we're just releasing them. So we also have this other cool thing coming out Pay with Pink, where you can any any vendor that accepts PayPal can now accept Pink Coin um, because we have a we'll have a pool of PayPal money, and we will be accepting Pink Coin on behalf of the vendor and paying them in PayPal. Or if they want to accept Pink Coin directly, they can accept Pink Coin. And this is something we've been working on for a couple weeks, actually a month and a half, really. We're beta testing it now, and we shall we should probably release it the next week or two, I'd imagine. Um, and it gives people the ability to spend pink coin wherever they wherever they desire, um, whether the vendor actually wants it or not. Um, so we're just giving people ease of access and ease of use. We also have uh, our developer Box Boxa has made this tremendous ability to send uh, coins through SMS Gateway, which he's been working on for a while, which we're releasing pretty soon, as well as this Wallet.Pink, which is a mobile sending platform um, to send people coins. Through, through burner wallets, through um, vanity vanity addresses, whatever it may be, just we're just doing so many things to add value and to make it easy for everybody. That's that's the thing with Bitcoin and and crypto in general is a lot of people are just intimidated by it. They're like, oh, this is so difficult. There's this long character I have to I have to um, copy and paste. It's just real difficult. And we we want to get past that. We want to bridge the gap and make it so that your 90 year old grandmother and your six year old daughter can use it just the same. You know. Right. And so we're we're doing a lot of a lot of things to 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 add value and to make ease of use. I was gonna uh, where was I? I was gonna uh, point just kind of recap for the audience that so basically to give you a summary of Pitcoin, it's not only a coin that has charitable because that's I think the the essence of Pitcoin I think or was part of the raw essence of Pitcoin was a coin that is charitable in a sense right that gives back or. You guys yeah, had that first cancer awareness uh, fundraising aspect as well. But um, now it sounds like Pincoin has gone to a realm where it's also about opening access um, for cryptocurrency to a wider audience and making cryptocurrency more accessible by, like you said, by creating anonymity, by being able to pay for... And this is not, I mean, th that's a feature that I... See, I'd heard... I forget what coin it was. There's a coin that's making a pay anywhere feature that you can pay anywhere that Bitcoin's accepted with this other coin. I forget what coin is doing that. Aerobit, right now. I believe, is Veracoin. 
Paracoin. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you guys made it kind of even more compelling, I feel like, by saying anywhere that PayPal is accepted, you could pay with PayPal. Yeah, because only a few vendors accept Bitcoin right now, but every vendor accepts, Pink, or, uh, every vendor accepts PayPal pretty much. Yep. That's something to look forward to. That's something that I'm really glad to kind of, I don't know if I'm break, I'm, I'm not breaking that story. I know you guys have been talking about it, but I mean, to my audience, I'm breaking that story. So to me, I'm, you broke that story to me just now because I didn't know that. So, <laughs> yeah, um, man. It's something that we're really proud of. It's, uh, it's been in the works and we talk, we're all about ease of use and this just makes spending pink coin easy. And also by, by doing it this way, because traditionally everyone wants like their, their vendors to accept their coin of choice, but there, it's a two-way street. It actually has a negative adverse effect as well because the vendor wants fiat. They don't want to hold on to your crypto coin, so they're going to need to to sell it to get their to get Bitcoin, then liquidate it to to get fiat money, right? And so with that, they're going to just accept whatever the market allows for. So they're going to be selling all of their coins onto the market, whatever it allows for, and it'll cause a dump if it's a large amount. Say you're spending a thousand dollars to buy something, or a thousand dollars of value to buy something. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of market cap for a lot of these smaller coins. So if, if that thousand dollars worth was just dumped on the market, it's going to cause a pretty adverse effect to your, your coin's value. And so by by doing this, we're acting as a middleman and liaison to hold the coins ourselves and sell strategically as opposed to dumping the price. And with that, we're also allowing our our community to the opportunity to invest in pink or in this uh, pay with pink and be the one that benefits from this pool of money and gets paid the dividends or, or whatever it may be. Because, um, I mean, me personally, and I know a lot of the guys in Pinkcoin, our developers, we could easily fund this ourselves, but we want to give back to our community and, and give them some sort of value, something to look forward to, something to, to kind of get excited about. And so we're giving these people the opportunity to, anybody who wants to, invest in this thing and, and be able to prosper with us. Right. Yeah, the beautiful thing of what you guys are doing, what everybody's doing in crypto, is that it's a true free market. Like, you can... You can try your experiment. Black coin can try their experiment. Their Ver coin and all the other coins can try all the things they want to do, and <laughs> the market will decide. Just like there's room for an Arby's and a McDonald's and a Burger King and a Jack in the Box, there's room for a Pink coin, Light coin, Doge coin, Yellow coin. Don't matter. Tom yep. coin, Joe coin, Bill coin. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I think not. The end of the day. That's just a silly phrase. But at the end, at the end of the time where the world reflects upon cryptocurrency as a group and says, oh shit, we all get it now, we're all using this now, like when it's the new smartphone of the world where everyone has some and everybody uses it, yep. they're probably, I would guess, the number that pops to my head is 10,000. There'll probably be 10,000 currencies that are noteworthy sure. that have a market cap of over 100,000 bucks or something like that, or over a million dollars, because sure. there's that much value objectively in the world, subjectively in the world, um, mm -hmm. uh, which one would it be, I guess, subjectively. But <clears throat> you have, I don't know, whatever it is, like $100 trillion worth of fiat in just U.S. dollars kicking around in, in ledger-based and, and actual physical goods. But um, so I think that Pinkcoin, uh, that's why I wanted to have you guys on the show. I think that you guys are, are, there's too many coins right now that are just latchers on, that are just trying to jump on the bandwagon and be like, oh, we're X11 and we do... 10-second blocks, and we and it's just like some arbitrary distinction about your coin. There's no marketing. There's no branding. There's no, you know, philosophical difference. Um, and what's really cool about Pinkcoin too is that you guys were a coin that started as kind of a scam coin in a sense, right? I'm gonna tell the story. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Started kind of as like a regular generic scam or color coin or whatever. The original developer bounced because he said, "Oh, well, this isn't gonna do anything for me. I, I tried to do a pump and dump or whatever, and it, it didn't work out." And yeah. then a few of you guys who are little bag holders kind of said, ah, you know, not, not so much the investment, but just I kind of like the coin. I kind of like where it was going. I kind of like the idea behind it, the charity thing. And uh, y'all yeah. kind of took ownership of the coin, which can happen in crypto. It's like the CEO of the company quits and all the other workers still keep going and, like, just divvy up his share. And that's kind of sure. how it seems to have gone down. And now the brand is getting a whole new look, a whole new image, a whole new, you know, purpose behind it. And a ton of new technology to where now it's a legitimate player right there with the Ethereum project and you know uh, Counterparty and it's it's starting to say hey we're Bitcoin 2.0 in a way too right or no? Yeah no I think you you're very very much on track there um, and initially when when the original developer Big Man created this thing um, we we had we had an independent um, third party 
crypto security expert Julian Yap. Um, we invited him and Bryce Weiner, uh, or I did via tw uh, Twitter, to do an independent, honest audit of our source code. Um, and Julian Yap stepped forward and said, "Hey, I'll do it," and did it for us, and didn't hold anything back. And so he he is we're, we're not the best like I'm not a coder. I don't I don't know how to read source code. And so I thought it beneficial for everyone. Myself included, and everyone on our team, as well as the whole public, to know what, what they're getting into. And so he did this. He let it let the world know that this guy had created this coin and and pretty much solo mined the first 187 blocks, which was equivalent to like 4.5 million pink coin or whatever. And then within two weeks, dumped them on the market and was game over. He was he was out. And so um, I, I wouldn't really call us bag holders though, because honestly, the price was so cheap that we never were really like holding any bags. There was like it was actually by the by the time the guy that had got out, I was actually still in profit. If I'm being honest, and so were I think most other people. Um, but so we we saw we saw a value and we saw a great branding opportunity. And I, I mean, originally, Pinkcoin was very much like one of those like uh, copycats. Me too. And they copied Blackcoin a lot with their 10-second blocks. They copied Darkcoin with X11 algorithm. They copied um, copied a lot of things. But we saw a lot of value. Like I, I saw the a tremendous opportunity for branding. I really liked that it had 364 million coins. Honestly, like that was a big appeal to me. Everyone says like, "Oh, it's not valuable. It's whatever. Like you need to have a million coins or less to be, be value on scarcity." But no, man, you you want to have like the ability to to let people share these things. You don't want people to co covet and hoard them. By having right. 364 million of these things, people are comfortable sharing with their friends and family. Like it's so much cooler to be a millionaire than it is to have 100 coins, right? Like you I, said you it yourself, yeah. Like I want to be a millionaire, yeah. man. I want to be a millionaire so freaking bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, with, oh, yeah. and with Bitcoin, you can be like, and and it has value. Like that million coins isn't going to be like like Dogecoin is a great coin. I think it's got a great community and it's it inspired me a lot. It inspired the whole Bitcoin uh, movement a lot in the community effort that we have. But I think there's too many coins in that, and it, the the abundance of coins kind of um, leaves the price not uh, limits the ability of price growth. Where having like hundreds of billions or whatever, but like having hundreds of millions, there, there's the ability for people to be millionaires and still like send and trade value, but also hold, have the coin hold value. And and by being a proof of stake algorithm, um, I'm an I'm an environmentally conscious dude. I, I'm very much um, into saving saving what I can at, um, of the environment and and like limiting my own uh, carbon footprint as much as I can. And I really like that there that there was a a small proof of work period, and there's no electricity costs going to this thing, and there's no threat of miners dumping on the market. So there had a, it had a lot of appeal to me in the first place. And with that, um, myself and the three and two other guys at first, Sony and some guy, came together and kind of um, led by example and started giving this stuff away, a, a lot of pink coin away. I think to date, I've probably given away almost 10 million pink coin, probably um, my, oh, myself yeah. personally. And Sony and and some guy have contributed easily two to three, two to four million themselves. Um, and by giving these these away, we got people interested. Like our our the guys failed in Transium, they they got interested because I gave them away pink coin, gave them pink coin on Twitter, and and then they, uh, I think I think it was on Twitter, and they're like, oh shit, I have some of these coins. Let me look into it. And they bought more, and they're like, oh, I like this. And then they hopped on board. They're like, I, I have some some value to offer. That's how we got our whole development team involved is by just kind of giving them giving it to them um, and letting them see what's up and then they they want it in they're like yo this is a cool community I, w I want a piece I want to I want to add value I want to be involved in this this is really what I'm all about you know like people want want to get involved and want to help and I think a lot of these coins like just don't give a fuck they're like yo just stay, stay at a distance man stay at a distance and I, yeah. I experience myself like I, I personally feel like I have a lot to, a lot to offer I have a lot of experience I have, a, I have a master's degree in business administration with a major in marketing, and I have a, a lot of ideas. And so I actually offered my ideas to, to Blackcoin at first, and they were um, I wanted to help. I, w I wanted to get involved in crypto for a while, and they just turned turned their head. They're like, Nah, man, we, we're ignoring you. And a, a lot of coins are, are the same way. And I think neglect and uh, um, and ignoring is, is is painful. Like it it sucks to be the the, the object of somebody's neglect and and have somebody ignore you, and that's the, the last thing that we want to do with, with Pinkwin. We want the whole community, we want everyone who wants to participate to be involved. We we don't care who you are and what you have to offer. If you if you have a Twitter account, if you have a Reddit account, like you have something that I would offer, like your support is all is all that's necessary. And so with that, we we kind of created this inclusive community environment where people who have something to offer can offer it and and feel rewarded in doing so because they're adding value to something they currently own and can can help boost the price up. 
whereas a lot of other people just feel like they're helpless and hopeless and have no direction and can't help at all. They're, they're just out of their control, their hands off. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that myself because I'm a marketing guy and, uh, you know, I, I do that for a living. I do, um, I advise, you know, clients, social media clients, you know, small business clients, musical artists, whatever. I advise them on their online branding, whatever. And it's it's definitely a little bit cold, hard feeling to deal with when you, when you feel like you have something to offer someone or a group and you say, hey, I, I have these ideas, I want to bring something to you. And you either don't get a response, or you get that generic form response. Thank you for your interest, and whatever. And it's like, all right, like, you know, you're lost, I guess. Whatever, you know, you just kind of move yeah. on. Yeah. Well, would it have taken that that much to just listen, to, like, to hear an idea and like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, nah, man, just I'm too busy. Like, I mean, I, I'm a developer now. Like, I know, I know how what busy is, and there, I always find time time for people. Like, I'm not ignoring anybody. Like, it, I think it's it's bad. It's bad form, and it's so many people have something to offer to contribute. And whatever, however big or small it may be, it's always valuable, always. And so mm -hmm. I think I think it's really short-sighted and really detrimental to the to the the potential of your your brand um, to just ignore the people that that actually have that care and have and can add value and can add an opinion that matters or whatever it is. And every opinion matters in my mind. Like there's always something to learn from any and everybody's opinion. Right. Well, I I, I definitely think that. My my viewers are gonna get just from hearing you speak that Pincoin because you're kind of one of the one of the mouthpieces. For I'm not saying you're the end all be all voice of Pincoin. No, right? not at all. No, but you're you're certainly within the original you're with, within the team, the core team, and I'm sure you're not speaking too far out of line. And I, I think that what you're what you're putting out there, a lot of people get behind. It's it's a mm -hmm. free market base. There's no Taxation involved, where like you're forcing yeah. people to give over their pink coin. Like if you have a wallet, like it takes out pink coin. To no, it, it's just the the core team. The, the you guys are putting your own pink coin out there. You guys are putting your own really yeah. fiat out there. If it takes that, it yeah. seems to to make sure that pink coins a success and that the community is able to benefit. And like, there's one thing for for some developer to just sit there at a market and buy coins when the price goes down low to try to keep their coin from going under, but you guys are doing far more than that, and I think that that's why I want to tell my viewers to keep track of our. We're gonna have well, we have a playlist ongoing on our channel, but keep track of all of our episodes, even if you can't watch them all. Keep track of the titles and who our interviews are with. We interviewed Evan Wagner of Counterparty. We interviewed uh, Joel Dietz of Swarm Corporation, and now we have uh, my dude here. I'm not gonna fuck up your name again. I'm gonna bring up my notes. Big D Shaggy J. <laughs> My man, Crypto Casey over here, Ballin from Pink, uh, Pink Coin, the Pink Profit, and I want to highlight the crypto projects that a get it, b are not in it for a quick buck, and c bring something unique to the market. Man, the market is all about diversity and, and variety, and that's how you get. Hey, you know what? Maybe I don't care about a cryptocurrency that's the most charitable and kind and giving. I just want to make money. Great. So find the one that does that for you. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, maybe Pincoin's that too, and you're just missing that uh, point because you're focused on the I assure you it is. <laughs> and I trust him. <laughs> look at the market. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a uh, World Series of Poker multi-time experience, you know, seasoned dude. He's made his uh, fair share of uh, winning pots and everything like that. So mm -hmm. I don't think Crypto Casey is, is picking too far off uh off the list of uh, winning investments on this one, but I'm going to be going out and buying more. Full disclosure, I do have a little stash of pink coin, not a big one. I'm not going to say the dollar amount so as to not embarrass myself, but crypto Casey knows <laughs> how small it is. It doesn't even pay for uh, my Wi-Fi bill for the month. So, But in pink coin, I have a butt ton of pink coin. I have like, I'll say how much I have. I have 50,000 or so pink coin. And, You're about um, to have 100,000 after the show. When I, when I get some, some uh, coin letter of my lottery, I'll, I'll tip you a couple. <laughs> You're too damn nice, man. No, you know what? And that's the thing. I wouldn't have any pink coin if it weren't for people like you saying, here's some free pink coin. I swear, I was on Twitter. I was building the CoinPros Twitter account, one of our Twitter accounts, and I, I ran into pink coin people, and I, I got a free lottery ticket. I got a pink coin tip. I got Julian Yap himself uh, had an awesome campaign going. He's the guy that, um, that uh, did your audit. And he, and also he runs CryptocurrencyWeekly.com. 
Cryptocurrency Weekly, I just say, he had an awesome campaign going where he's giving out free pink coin just for signing up to his newsletter, which is a no-brainer. I mean... Yeah, newsletter's great. And it's a great newsletter. It's super informative. It's not cluttered. It's not slammed with ads and bullshit yeah. marketing. It's just factual stuff that helps you learn about crypto. But anyway, man, I'm afraid I might be pushing my time slot for, for my... I don't know how much time runs interview, so I know <laughs> that if... if if the people that are watching can get the enthusiasm that you had and my interest in what's going on and our, our dynamic, that's what Pincoin's about. So yeah, look, get some Bitcoin, get some Litecoin. Actually, I don't even really think Litecoin's that much of a thing right now, but get some Bitcoin, <laughs> get some maybe some Dogecoin, um, Pincoin. Why the fuck not? I mean, honestly, you can get yourself a million Pincoin right now for not a lot of money. Bitcoin. Yeah, for like a Bitcoin. So if you have four or five or Bitcoin. 20 or... Oh, eight Bitcoin? No, point eight Bitcoin. Right now, is a, is a, I think it's about what it costs for a million of these things. That's ridiculous. I have no excuse for not being a million <laughs> right now. <laughs> but yeah, go out and get yourself at least... Get yourself 50,000 Bitcoin. Get into the community. Get yourself I mean, 20 bucks. Go out, get yourself tweet, 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin. Me. Bitcoin. Tweet Crypto tweet Casey. Me, He'll tweet give me you want some pink coin. I'll give, you, I'll give you some lottery tickets. I'll give you some pink coin. I'll get you in the game. He'll give you some free <laughs> shit right now. All right? Yeah, man. All, all about sharing and caring, man. Teamwork to make the dream work. <laughs> Read this guy. Check out um, Coin Bros Crypto Talk Hour. We'll be back next week, um, Wednesdays, 7.30, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The Real final quick, word goes to you, Crypto Casey. Yeah, thank you. The final thank word you. goes to you, my dude. Always. I appreciate it. Let me... Uh, let me take a, take a second to highlight some things that we're doing with Pinkcoin. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we have this great charity campaign fundraiser to raise awareness and education for breast uh, breast cancer found yeah, breast cancer research through the National Breast Cancer Foundation, which is hosted through stayclassy.org. You can find the link in our announcement thread as well as on crypto.pink, which is our website. Additionally, we have this great anonymous sending feature um, integrated into our wallet, and since we have that, we have this awesome website, anon.pink, which we're auctioning off at anon.pink slash auction for the whole entire month. If you're a coin developer or a coin supporter and you want the ability to send your coins anonymously, um, place a bid on there. It's a silent auction for a whole month, and the winning bid will get this uh, whole anonymous sending platform integrated into their coin. Um, done by us. We'll, we'll host the service for you. We'll make it happen. And this anonymous sender has been audited by crypto security experts. It's had the 20-page white paper that's out there. It's the real deal holy field. So uh, please don't be shy. If you want this to make it happen, if you want to pump your coins, price up, get your people excited, make a bid, man. Let's let's uh, let's get this out there because it's going. proceeds are going to a great cause. We're going to, to, to our National Breast Cancer Foundation. Also, we have this awesome Pink Coin Lottery bot at Pink Coin Lottery. Um, where you can ticket lottery tickets to yourself and friends or followers. It's a great icebreaker. 100 pink coin gets you a lottery ticket. If you want to talk to somebody and don't know how, you're afraid or timid, send them, send them a lottery ticket and then tell them what's up afterwards in a message. And with that, 25% of all proceeds go toward our Breast Cancer Foundation. We raised already to date 250,000 pink or pink coin plus, um, which we will liquidate into fiat money at the end of uh, the campaign, which is the end of October, National Breast Cancer Month. Um, so we get a lot of great things, and the website for that is lottery.pink. And yes, it's .pink, not .com. There's a pink .pink to top level domain name which we have a lot of. Um, so go check us out, man. And uh, thank you very much, RJ, for having me. It was it's been a pleasure. It's great talking to you, man. <laughs> Likewise, dude. Thank you so much. I really encourage my audience to go out there and follow all the links because Pinkcoin is not just the wallet and the website and the nope. Bitcoin talk thread. There's so much going on in this project, and we couldn't even cover it in one whole episode. So I'm going to have all the links in the show notes and in the uh, YouTube description. So you can go down the list one by one and just try everything out and see what the anonymous send features like and see what the lottery tickets are all about and see what the Pink Wars is all about. And there's just so much stuff that we couldn't even really even get to everything. But um, <laughs> check it out. Follow Crypto KC on Twitter, and you, you won't miss a beat. Um, but thank you so much for being on the show, man, and we'll uh, have you back. back in a few months maybe when there's more developments to talk about. Whenever you want, man. I'm always here. Cool, dude. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro.